Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here, and I thought it'd be relevant to talk about the crisis in Ukraine today, the war in Ukraine, and Carl Jung's warning to humanity. It shouldn't be a secret or it shouldn't be glossed over that Carl Jung had very dark views of the future of humanity. Carl Jung was far from an optimist when it came to the future of the human race. In his book Ion, he detailed and talked about long about the dangers of human evolution and the risks associated with it. He was far from an optimist when talking about the coming of the new age in human existence. And beyond that, he went further. He even had visions about the end of humanity. Carl Jung had two noteworthy visions to talk about here. First, he had a series of notes detailing the last 50 years of human existence. Beyond that, Marie-Louise von Franz saw that Carl Jung had a vision, a vision of most of the planet destroyed. Yeah, Carl Jung saw much of the planet laid to waste, but thankfully he said not all of it. Thankfully not all of it. So Carl Jung was certainly very, very fearful in talking about the dawn of the new human age, especially when it came to his book Ion. Ion is a book talking about the progress of human evolution, and you could say Carl Jung, as a psychologist, was dedicated to studying human myths, legends, and archetypes. Carl Jung saw that inside of us there were a wide variety of archetypes, stories and legends that we had inherited from our parents and our ancestors. Humans are storytelling creatures and we've grown to develop stories and myths and legends and these myths and legends have come to shape and explain human development and human experience. You could say that with every day, with every year, we are growing, we are gaining new experiences, we are creating new images, memes, symbols, archetypes. And these lives, these archetypes, these myths come to take a life of their own and they kind of detail human progress and the lessons that we are learning as we progress throughout life. And we could definitely say that humans are progressing in the wider scale of things. Humans have certainly grown to become more and more compassionate, more and more caring, and more and more intelligent. If you look and track human development over the past two, three hundred years, you can say that humans have made a tremendous leap in progress. And that means more people than ever have access to education today, more people than ever have access to healthcare, more people than ever have a job, a livable wage, and so they can fund food and a house for themselves and they can create their own life. What that means is we are creating and we are progressing and we are learning, but no lesson comes without its kinks and without its tragedies. Humans have experienced a wide variety of tragedies throughout the years, not to gloss over World War II or World War I or any of the wars that have existed before then. Human history has been bloody. We have killed each other over and over again as we have learned lessons about compassion and about the futility of war. And we've found ourselves repeating our mistakes over and over again. Carl Jung in Ion detailed much of why we keep repeating our mistakes, why we keep on um, causing ourselves harm, why we keep on putting ourselves in danger. And one thing he saw was that we have a tendency to move towards becoming our very own opposite. We have a tendency to get stuck in a loop in which we resolve to be better and then end up destroying our own resolve and becoming the very thing we swore not to be. And so you could say that what tends to happen and what has happened throughout the last 2000 years to uh, focus a little bit is we've tried to bond and create nation states and groups and tribes of compassion in which we support and help one another. But we have also found ourselves creating in this enemies, other tribes, opposing tribes, which represent monsters, enemies, evil people who are not as righteous as us, people who don't share our values and our pride and our strength and our amazing human potential. And so we have found ourselves at full-scale war between these tribes. We have found our compassion towards our brethren also to become our hatred towards people who we share no kinship with, people who used to be our neighbors become monsters without our blood, without our what is it, Aryan ethnicity or whatever it might be. And 
that's the tragedy of uh, compassion. The more our compassion grows for one another, also we risk uh, creating the opposite of compassion, hatred towards our opposite and what is not like us. So if we unite based on our similarities, we also uh, find ourselves detaching from people who we find to be different from us for any reason, no matter how small. And so you could say that we are at the peak of that stage today with people having evolved to have extremely community-oriented values. We live in a society today where community is more important than ever and where people all search for a place to fit in. Most people who study the 16 personalities do so because they want to find people with whom they share kinship, bonds and a shared personality. Most people are looking for somebody to identify with, somebody who they can feel connection with. I wanted to talk about a little about the conflict in Ukraine today and how it connects to Jung's visions and his uh, warnings to humanity. You know, Carl Jung had many fears about the future of human experience because he knew that even though we are getting more empathetic, even though we are becoming more self-aware, even though we are becoming more compassionate, we are also becoming more and more capable of destruction. We can do more harm than ever today and that's perhaps because we know more about each other's today. Nowadays war is different. War 50 years ago is very different to war today. War today is between people who have a, and share a mutual understanding. The people of Ukraine know that the people of Russia are people, human beings with values, ethics, morality, feelings, needs and thoughts and desires just as the Ukrainian people do. And the people of Russia fighting in the wars know that the people of Ukraine are human beings just like them. We all know the futility of war and the tragedy of it. We all suffer under it and we feel forced to suffer under it because we have no other choice. We are forced to go to war fully self-aware and fully cognizant of the fact that we are killing conscious and aware people. We are killing people just like ourselves. So war today is fought with compassion and uh, it's fought with uh, desperation and with necessity and with compassion all together and we can no longer hide from this fact. So future wars will continue to be fought and we will continue to fight wars and wars seem to be a continued trend throughout human ex history and it's hard to say when it will end and when we will reach a state of world peace. But it's said, and it can be said, that wars in the future will be fought with a forced compassion because we can no longer shut off to the consequences of our own actions. I want to talk a little bit about Plato and the analogy of the cave. Plato, the philosopher in ancient Greece, he talked about how he saw people often stuck in caves, tied by, away from the world around them their eyes fixated on the walls of the caves. The walls of the caves showed shadows of creatures, of people, of things. And these shadows became the main fascination of these people. The cave analogy details how we tend to become preoccupied with a shadow of reality. We tend to find ourselves locked in a state of autopilot, in a state of unawareness, in a state of lower consciousness. And in that state of lower consciousness, we are not truly alive. We are not on the surface. We are not experiencing life outside the cave. We are not breathing in the fresh air. We are experiencing merely a shadow of the real truth of what really is. So today, more people than ever have risen to become aware and to move out of that cave and to start to think for themselves. Many of these people have been spearheaded by existentialism. Existentialism has been in many ways the cure to unawareness and the cure to consciousness because consciousness comes at a price and it seems only existentialists have been able to provide a soothing explanation or answer to that cost, to that price. Still today many people live in the caves, still today many people live in a state of autopilot, unaware of themselves and others. And not everyone has risen to have that state of compassion or that state of awareness. I want to talk today about the Russian people, the people that continue to support Putin and continue to support authoritarianism across the world, not just in Russia, but across the world. 
several people, millions of people are living in dictatorships where they are not allowed free will or the chance to speak their mind or the chance to make their own decisions. True freedom is not a possibility for a lot of people and many people feel they have no choice but to participate in authoritarian regimes. Most people living in Russia might carry little sympathy towards Putin and perhaps would even kill him if they had a chance, but continue to serve him and support him and help him simply because they feel they have no choice. And so most people become complicit in the evil. Most people become uh, partners in crime of the things that they hate. A lot of us find ourselves tied to and attached to a job that we know is bad for us or relationships that we know we don't want to be in or a lifestyle that we don't enjoy or value but feel forced to endure it and similarly people in soviet even more perhaps certainly much more um, feel they have no choice but to do what they are told beyond that most people would go the extra mile most people would do anything they could to please their masters, to sh go the extra mile to show support to Putin or to Stalin or whoever was in charge in the past. And to they would even rat out their friends, you know. Two out of three people in the Soviet state would rat out their friends or family members for the chance of extra bread or extra support or extra favor with the government. So people were helping and supporting the authoritarian regime and felt they had no choice but to do so. Existentialists uh, showed an antidote to this uh, desire to live in autopilot. The, you know, the question is, why do people want to live in autopilot? Why do people choose to become complicit? Well, of course, you should not underestimate the price of fear and the price of anxiety. When you have a leader, a master, there is no reason to feel anxiety. You don't have to worry as long as you have the favor of your authority figure. As long as you do what your parents tell you to do, as long as you do what other people say, you don't need to think for yourself. You don't need to feel anxiety. You don't need to worry because they have got your back. Beyond that, an authority figure can take away your guilt. You don't have to feel responsible for anything you do. You simply do what you must. You're not responsible. Your leaders are. It's not your fault that you have to fight in wars to kill people in Ukraine or somewhere else. It's your leader's fault. You don't have to feel anything. You don't have to feel any participation or any moral responsibility in anything you do. You're just doing what you're told. Authoritarianism offers a cure to anxiety, to guilt, to fear, to shame, and takes away all those negative emotions. So you can continue to live in that state of autopilot, blissfully unaware, avoiding to think of anything negative, People living in this state will refuse to entertain any negative thought. They'll refuse to think critically about their situation. They'll refuse to think about the consequences of their actions or the moral repercussions or the empathy or the qualms of their actions because it's not their problem. It's somebody else's and they have no choice anyway. So there's no thought or point to thinking like that anyways. Still, we know that if everyone stopped thinking like that, authoritarianism would be cured in a day. If everyone woke up tomorrow and said, hey, I'm going to think for myself, I'm going to make my own decisions and I'm going to stand up for myself and I'm going to choose to feel my own feelings and to live with responsibility for my own decisions, well, we would have no dictators anymore because there would be no more supporters. We know that it's the complicitness of people that allow and validate authoritarian regimes and it's because of their complicitness that authoritarian regimes even become dangerous. If there was nobody to follow, there would be no role or purpose for a leader. So humanity has to learn a lesson and humanity is in the process of awakening and becoming conscious. And Carl Jung was the person that detailed the process to becoming conscious. Carl Jung spent his entire life trying to explain to people how you can become conscious. And in his book, he details the process of how you can become aware, how you can take back power, how you can become more conscious, how you can awaken. And so we all have to take a time to look through and study Carl Jung's work, study our own personality types, study our own cognitive functions and our own thought processes. We have to learn to become self-aware, aware of ourselves, aware of our passions and our purpose, aware of why we are here, 
confident in ourselves, confident enough to speak out for our boundaries, to speak out for what we want and what we need. Every one of us has to take time to sit down with themselves and their own feelings and thoughts and to recognize who they are and what they are thinking and what they are feeling. We have to stop uh, following blindly other people. We have to stop supporting authoritarianism and we have to start learning our lessons. And the good news is we are learning our lessons. I think a lot of people carry a fear with them in regards to the crisis in Ukraine, a fear that this escalation will lead to the destruction of the planet, to worldwide war, to nuclear warfare and to destruction of the planet. Many people fear this reality and I would say, I would say it's a genuine and real fear to have. Fear is here to send a message, it's information, it's telling you about your current situation, it's telling you about what's happening. It's not going to tell you what will happen, but it's telling you what could happen. Similarly, Carl Jung's visions were visions of what could happen, not what will happen. What Carl Jung saw was from his own fears, from his own experiences of the human shadow, he knew full well that human beings were capable of mass destruction and of great empathy and great compassion. And if you look at and study his works, there are many things to be said about the future. There is a positive image to be had about the future. It should be said before I go into that, that human beings have been much closer to self-destruction than what we are today. About 50 years ago, we had the crisis in Cuba. And in that time, there was a genuine risk of the entire world collapsing in nuclear fallout. In that time, the world could have been seconds or minutes away from mass destruction worldwide. But people decided then not to do it and they can decide tomorrow not to do it again. And so you could see that we are still far away from any such a reality and we are hopefully learning our lessons and hopefully our new way of warfare, compassionate warfare, is going to be the future. And perhaps we will be able to engage in these kinds of conflicts without uh, pushing each other is too far and without causing a point of no return. I think our empathy has taught us to know exactly how far we can push our enemies and how far we can go in war and in defending ourselves. I think our compassion has taught us the possibilities and also the consequences of our actions. And so we become smarter about conflict and we've learned about how to engage in it. We become better people and hopefully that will echo in the conflict in Ukraine no matter how big of a tragedy it will be, because it will certainly be a tragedy. It will hopefully be a tragedy that is mitigated to some extent by our growth in compassion. I want to end this video by talking about the possibilities of the future, because if we can say that in the past 2000 years we've had an awakening, we've had the birth of Jesus Christ, whether he was God or whether he wasn't, We've had the myths and the legends around Christianity shaped Western society and Western civilization. And everything that's happened in the past 2000 years have taught us compassion and has taught us empathy and has taught us to care for one another, to turn the other cheek, uh, to see and understand the, uh, how our actions can have consequences on people around us. We've all been developing and growing and our ancestors have been growing and our parents have been growing and those lessons are all with you today. So we are on the right path. Uh, but what's next? What is it that we have to learn to develop today? Carl Jung talked about in Ion how human civilization grows in scales from 2000 years. He talked about how we were in the era of Pisces, the fish and how Jesus Christ represented the fish and the symbol of the fish. Generosity, kindness, compassion, sensitivity. Those were the lessons that Jesus Christ taught us. And so what are the lessons that we will have to learn in the next 2000 years? Well, Carl Jung said that was the lessons of the Aquarius myth. So we're stepping into the age of Aquarius, he called it. And what he means by that is we are, we are learning to enter an era of self-awareness and consciousness and higher consciousness. And while that might mean upheaval and big societal shifts and big changes and uh, new myths and new legends, 
it might also mean the capacity for people to drive forward new innovation and higher level of awareness. Perhaps this is these next 2000 years are the years where we learn to uh, fully become aware of our own consequences of our actions. Perhaps the next 2000 years are the years that will really drive human awakening and human ascension. Perhaps we're just starting out our learning of lessons. Perhaps we are going to enter into a new cycle, hopefully a less bloody one, hopefully a, a cycle of compassion. These are some of my thoughts on Carl Jung's Ion and Carl Jung's Warning of the World. What are your thoughts about the situation in Ukraine and Carl Jung's beliefs? And what do you think humanity has to learn in order to reach the next level of human transformation and civilization? Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.